Today on Adventures in Faith with Jerry Savell. The Bible says that God is disposed to be compassionate, favorable, amen. You don't have to talk God into it. Right. He wants to do it. Yes. He desires to do it. He gets great pleasure out of doing it. Yeah. All right, you know where you open the Bible? Psalm 145. Psalm 145. <clears throat> and for the sake of time, we'll just go ahead and drop down to verse 15. The eyes of all wait upon thee, and thou givest them their meat in due season. Thou openest thine hand and satisfy the desire of every living thing. As you remember, the Lord said to me in October of 2021, tell the people wherever you go this year, 2022, that if they will not be moved by all the chaos and all the disorder that is taking place in the world around them, I will open my hand and cause them to experience supernatural, extraordinary, and unusual provision. So let's, let's let the Lord know once again today that we will not be moved. So lift your hands and say, Lord, you can depend on me. I will not be moved by all the chaos and all the disorder that is taking place in the world around me. I'm only moved by what I believe, and I believe the Word of God. So I am a candidate for supernatural provision. And give the Lord a good shout of praise for it. Amen. All right, I want to read this from the Amplified Bible. You open your hand and satisfy every living thing with favor. Favor. This is one of the things, as I mentioned yesterday, that is so important and so vital for the time in which we live, is learning how to depend upon, how to walk in, how to operate in the favor of God. Because the favor of God can make things happen that nothing else can do, that nothing else can. Favor can do what money can't do. Favor can do what prestige can't do. Favor can do what seniority can't do. As I mentioned yesterday, I get letters from people all over the world talking about uh, how the favor of God has opened this door and how the favor of God has opened that door. In fact, uh, I've received several letters over the years of people who, and they send me a copy of the letter that they received from the IRS and uh, said, uh, Brother Jerry, I had favor with the IRS they forgot a debt. One, one, they forgave a debt. One person said they owed $30,000 to the IRS, and they wrote back and said to them, and showed me the letter. Uh, we have forgiven the debt. Just pay us $3,000 for the paperwork, and it's all settled. Now, folks, when the IRS starts forgiving debt, look up, thy redemption draweth nigh. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. So you open your hand and satisfy with favor. Look at your neighbor and say, thank God for the favor of God. Thank God for the favor. Amen. Now, it's always been available to us. Let's go back to Psalm 5 once again. Psalm 5. Psalm 5, verse 12. For thou, Lord, will bless the righteous with favor, wilt thou compass him as with a shield. So notice God blesses the righteous with favor. Now, as I said, I didn't know favor with God existed prior to 1969. I'd never heard the phrase favor with God. Uh, you know, I, I grew up in a Baptist church. Uh, I'm a country boy. I was born in, on a farm in Mississippi. Uh, the first church I ever went to was a black church. It was just walking distance from our farm. And... Uh, my grandfather went to the, the Calvary Baptist Church that was a few miles away, but my grandmother said, son, I like the black church. They're more lively. And so she took me to the black church, and she was right. They were lively. But I never heard a sermon about the favor of God. 
And when we moved, my family, uh, my dad moved us to Shreveport, Louisiana when I was a young boy, but we still owned the farm all those years after my grandparents passed away. Dad inherited it, and then when Dad passed away, my sister and I inherited it, and I just got rid of it here just a short time ago, a few years ago. And, uh, but I would go back over there during the summer and spend several weeks with my grandparents, and uh, I loved the place, and uh, I, I had a horse when I left uh, Vicksburg, Mississippi to move to Shreveport, Louisiana. So my grandfather kept the horse there for me. So as soon as I would arrive, I'd, I'd go in and, and visit with my grandmother and grandfather and love on them. And grandma always had a wonderful country meal prepared for me, you know. And uh, we were self-contained on that farm. Uh, we had crops. Uh, my grandfather had cattle, had chickens. Uh, he had a hundred head of hogs. We didn't, we, we were self-contained. And boy, every time I'd come, we ate from every one of them. <laughs> and my grandmother could fry that chicken, boy, and she'd make them homemade yeast rolls. I couldn't eat enough of them. And corn on the cob, oh my goodness. She couldn't fill me up with corn on the cob. And I'd, I'd eat until I couldn't, I couldn't hardly get away from the table and then go get on my horse. We had about 70 acres there. And I'd spend the rest of the day riding all over the place on my horse. And uh, so I, I, I loved uh, farm life, and uh, I love being raised in the country. I remember a number of years ago, uh, we, we, Carolyn, I believe, discovered this house that had once been owned by John Kinley, uh, John, uh, what was his name? The senator that was in the... Uh, Conley, yeah. He was in the limo with John Kennedy, when Kennedy was assassinated. He was a senator from Texas, John Conley. This house had been built, and built by John Conley. And uh, it had a lot of acreage with it when he built it, but eventually after he left it, the uh, city of Fort Worth started buying up acreage around there and building and school right across from it and all. But it's still a, a beautiful old house and we got it. And Carolyn said, uh, I wanna restore this place. And uh, she, she has a gift from God. She can, take, she can take a place that needs to be uh, set a match to and turn it into a show place. She said, I'll turn this into a show place if you'll believe God for the money. <laughs> <laughs> and so she went to work on it. And she turned it into a beautiful place. It had a swimming pool. It had fountains and it had trees, trees. You have to believe God for a tree in Fort Worth. <laughs> you know, I grew up in Mississippi, South, uh, in, in East, uh, 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 North Louisiana, and we had trees. I come to Fort Worth, where's the trees? <laughs> in fact, many times when I travel, especially North Carolina, Tennessee, you know, in that area there, and, I, and somebody picks me up at the airport, and I, I say, look at the trees, look at the trees. And somebody will say, Brother Jerry, you never seen a tree? Oh, yes, but you have to believe God for them in Fort Worth. <laughs> and this, this place had trees, a lot of trees. And, uh, but it was in the city. And even though I enjoyed it, it was a beautiful place. Carolyn made it into a beautiful place. One day I said, Carolyn, I'm a country boy. I need some space. So go find us some, some, some space out somewhere. And she did. She found a some space out on the south side of Fort Worth, Crowley, Texas, where we live now. And you know what they've done? They've come out there and built houses all around me. I'm back in the city again. So that's why I have another house on the river, <laughs> about 30 miles from Fort Worth. And they ain't coming out there, praise God. So anyway, uh, I'm a country boy, I like my space. And I, I, I learned a long, long time ago that no matter what looks impossible, the favor of God is capable of making it happen. Amen. Amen. For instance, the, the, the place on the river, the Brazos River, it's called Silverado on the Brazos, and it's a ranching community. 
everybody out there has at least 10 acres. A lot of cattle, a lot of horses, everything, and very private, uh, uh, private entrance and so forth. And my place is on the Brazos River. And uh, uh, when, when we started looking at that place, the first time I looked at it, they wanted a whole lot more money for it. And uh, uh, eventually, we started looking at some other places, and they took it off the market for a while. And then down the road, it came up again. And we went and looked at it and just fell in love with it, thought this is, this is exactly what I'm looking for. And they had reduced the price by about $400,000. And I don't think that was a coincidence. <laughs> We're talking about the favor boy. Amen. You know, some people are called nature boy. <laughs> I'm favor boy. <laughs> favor boy, praise God. And, uh, and, and we had some property in Granbury, Texas, on Lake Granbury, and we sold all of it and was able to pay cash for this place, praise God. And it was all a story of the favor of God. I depend on favor every day of my life. This is not just a sermon to me. It's a lifestyle. Amen. And, and you can make it your lifestyle as well and learn to depend upon it. Because right here, it's very clear. If you are one of the righteous, then you've been blessed with favor. And uh, uh, I, I remember the first time I ever heard about righteousness from Kenneth Copeland back there in 1969. That's another thing I never heard about. I didn't know about. You know, the only time I think I'd heard anything about righteousness in the little church I grew up in was that our righteousness is as filthy rags. There's none righteous, no, not one. And everybody in church said, yes, amen. <laughs> and then Brother Copeland come along and, and taught me on the reality of righteousness. I'll never forget what a, what a revelation, what a life-changing revelation it was to me that I have right standing with God. Wow that God's not holding anything against me? Wow. Now, I know all of you had a wonderful past, but mine was not so wonderful. I'm not proud of some of the things I did B.C., before Christ. But that's all under the blood, hallelujah. Amen. Now, I wasn't as bad as Jesse, but, but you know. I mean, Paul said he was the chiefest sinner of them all, and Jesse was number two. His mama called him a heathen from hell. <laughs> but we all have a past, and, and, and a lot of it we're not proud of. But when I found out I had been made righteous, right standing with God, I'll never forget Brother Copeland saying, it's just an old English term. Amen. And it means right standing with God. That changed my life. And then when I found out, because Jesus has made me righteous that I now have the favor of God on my life. What a life-changing revelation. Look at somebody and say, did you know I'm the righteousness of God? And they'll tell somebody else, and did you know I have the favor of God on my life? Man, I don't know about you, but I think that's shouting ground, praise God. Amen. I have the favor of God on my life. So once again, Psalm 145 from the Amplified, you open your hand and satisfy with favor. Satisfy with favor. Now, once again, the favor of God's all, always been on your life since you made Jesus the Lord of your life. But a lot of people are just now finding out about it. Yeah. The Bible says that my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. Amen. Uh, Kreplo brought out last night the scripture in Romans, awake unto righteousness. A lot of people are just now awaking to these basic truths, basic but profound. And one of them being they've been made righteous and another one being that they have the favor of God. Yeah. Amen. And as I said yesterday, the time in which we live, 
you're going to need to learn how to walk in the favor of God more today and in the days to come than ever before in your life. Because there are things that are happening around us now that only the favor of God can get you through and can get you over. Can you say amen? Amen. Hallelujah. And like I said, I depend on it every day of my life. I remember a time I was in uh, preaching in South Africa back in the early days, uh, in the early 80s, and uh, they, they took me to the Zulu village. And uh, uh, I was ministering to the Zulus. And afterwards, the witch doctor took me into his hut. And of course, I took an interpreter in there so I could uh, communicate with him. And uh, one of the first things he asked me was this, where did you get your power? I said, from God. And then I asked him, where did you get your power? He said, spirits. He said, but your power is greater than my power. How can I get your power? That sounds like something out of the book of Acts. Amen. And I said, well, sir, you need to be born again. You need to invite Jesus into your life. And he did. It's right there. I led him in the sinner's prayer and he received Christ. In fact, today, one of my Bible schools is in that village. Praise God. Isn't that amazing? And so uh, uh, afterwards, uh, he, he went back into this hut and brought out the spear. It was a ceremonial spear that had belonged to his father and his father before him. And it had been passed down <clears throat> from one generation to the other. And he wanted to give it to me as a gift. Wow. Okay. And so I got this spear and it's, and it's very precious to me. It's very meaningful to me. How am I going to get this spear back home? I don't want to take a chance on it getting broken or stolen or misplaced. This is a precious item. Okay, it wasn't money, but what it represented was more precious to me than money. Okay, so I I, I get to uh, Cape Town. We we drove to Cape Town and I go in the airport with my spear. (laughs) And I'm standing at at the desk there and uh, the counter. And uh, I said, I need to fly to, uh, uh, well, I already had tickets, you know, but I'm checking in and, and I'm checking in my luggage, but I, I didn't let go of that spear. <laughs> she said, you can't carry that spear aboard. I said, you don't understand, ma'am. Th- this is very precious. She said, it's considered a weapon. <laughs> you can't carry that spear aboard. I said, ma'am, I can't, I can't put this underneath. I've got to carry it on board with, I promise I'll put it up overhead and I won't, I won't take it out until we get to London. And then I'll take it out and get on my next flight. She said, I'm sorry, you cannot put that spear. You cannot take that spear on board. Well, somebody behind me tapped me on the shoulder. I turned around and it was a captain with South African airlines. And he said, where are you going? I said, I'm going to London. He said, I'm, I'm flying that flight. I'll put it up in the cockpit and then I'll give it to you when we land in London. So my spear, I was in first class, but my spear was first first class. <laughs> so I said, what a coincidence. Yo, mama, that's the favor of God. That's the favor of God. Then I get to London and I go through the same thing when I get to Heathrow and I'm on a board, you know, uh, American Airlines back to DFW. Got my spear. (laughs) You can't bring that spear aboard. I said, I know I've heard that before, but you don't understand this. This is a, this is a treasure. I'm, I'm sure it is, but you can't bring it aboard. Somebody walked up about that time, tapped me on the shoulder and it was a captain from American Airlines. He said, where are you going? I said, DFW. He said, I'm flying that flight. Give me your spear. I'll put it up front in the cockpit for me. With me. Amen. Now, people think these are coincidences. Well, if they are, they happen to me all the time. I don't think it's a coincidence. Amen. 
and I have that spear in my, in my library, in my office at home, standing in the corner there, along with a, a shield that he blessed me with. And, uh, you know, and it's very precious and priceless to me. And the favor of God made it happen. Amen. The favor of God made it happen. So, you know, you can, you can expect the favor of God simply because you are the righteousness of God yes. and God has blessed the righteous with favor. Amen. Look at somebody saying, that is me he's talking about. <clears throat> All right, now listen to this. <clears throat> Excuse me. The favor of God's always been available to us since we received Christ, but a lot of people have not yet learned how to walk in it, how to depend upon it. Well, one of the first things you do is to begin to decree it. I have the favor of God. We've read this in both services that I've done so far. Job 22, 28, thou shalt decree a thing and it shall be established unto thee. In other words, if you talk it enough and if you talk it frequently, continually, eventually, it will become a common occurrence in your life. Amen. So you get up every day decreeing, I have the favor of God on my life. Favor goes before me and opens doors that no man can shut. Favor changes rules and regulations and policies. Favor gets me in places where prestige can't. Seniority can't. Amen. So learn to depend upon it by decreeing it every day of your life. And notice here it says that we will be satisfied with favor. Satisfied. That means uh, it will go beyond our expectations. Going beyond our expectations. Now, let me read some scripture here uh, that you can follow along with or you might want to open your Bibles and mark them. Psalm 40, I mean, Psalm 90, verse 14. Oh, satisfy us early with thy mercy that we may rejoice and be glad all our days. Mm. Now, mercy can also be translated as benevolence, uh, tenderness of heart, compassion, and favor. So let's put the word favor in there. Satisfy us early with thy favor that we may rejoice and be glad all our days. So that's the reason I say, get up in the morning and begin decreeing the favor of God. I'd, I'd consider that early. Amen. Satisfy us early with thy favor so that we can rejoice not only today, but rejoice all our days. Hallelujah. Yes. So get up every morning, thanking God for the favor of God, decreeing that it's on you. It goes before you. Amen. It surrounds you. Praise God. So that you'll be able to rejoice today and continue rejoicing all the days of your life. Oh, I thank God for the favor of God every day of my life. Now, the message translation says, listen to this. This is so good. I remember the first time I ever picked up a message Bible. Somebody gave it to me right here in this convention a long, long time ago. And I'd never, it, it had just come out. And uh, so I was flying uh, to Africa and I took it with me on board so I could read it because I hadn't read any of it yet. And some of the verses were so funny. I just started laughing out loud. And uh, the flight attendant came and said, what are you laughing at? What are you reading? I said, the Bible. She said, the Bible? What's funny about the Bible? I said, this one's funny. You ought to read it sometimes. Now, here's what the message translation says. Surprise us. Make up for the bad time. Make up for our bad times with some good times. <coughs> Amen. Make up for all the bad times with some good times. How many of you, that might be your prayer today. Make up for all the bad times 
with some good times. And how will God do that? Favor, favor, amen. The Bible says that God is disposed to be compassionate, favorable, amen. You don't have to talk God into it. He wants to do it. He desires to do it. He gets great pleasure out of doing it. Do you need more of God's favor today? He will pour out His favor and move His mighty hand on your behalf. Today's special offer, The Extraordinary Favor Package, contains Jerry Savelle's new book, Hey, That's the Favor of God, and his inspiring three-part audio series, Experiencing the Extravagant Favor of God. While you may be faced with distressing times, God is not going to leave you there. God is merciful, kind, and gracious. His favor can bring you out of impossible-looking situations that would ruin others. In this package, Jerry reveals how to recognize God's favor, how to experience prosperity, how to live in God's mercy, and how to overcome every challenge. Don't delay. Call or go online now to jerrysavelle.org and request your copy of the Extraordinary Favor Special Package. Order now to increase your faith for God's favor. His extraordinary favor manifesting in your life will turn the worst of times into the best of times. What a joy it is to be able to come to you each and every week and share with you the principles that I've learned over the last 52 years that have enabled me to become a winner in life. And that's what God wants you to be, a winner in life. Not win a few, lose a few. He wants you to win every time. Thanks be unto God, Paul said, who gives us the, the ability to triumph in Christ always, not sometimes, but always. And one of those great principles that I learned over 52 years ago was how to work in the favor of God. And we've got a brand new book entitled, Hey, That's the Favor of God. This is what the Lord told me to do way back there when he began to teach me on this. He said, every time you experience my favor, stop right then, say out loud, hey, that's the favor of God. He said, each time you do that, you'll begin to expect it more and more often. Not only that, you'll begin to experience it more and more often. So this is a little book you can read in just a matter of a few minutes. Hey, that's the favor of God, brand new. And then also uh, three CDs on experiencing the extravagant favor of God. That's one of the things the Lord said to me. He said, tell the people to get ready to experience my favor extravagantly. In other words, like you've never experienced it before. So this is our extravagant favor package that we want to offer you today. And I want to encourage you to order it right now while it's fresh in your thinking. Go to jerrysavelle.org or look on the screen right now and all the order information will be there. Place your order. We'll get it to you just as quickly as we possibly can. Join me again next week for Adventures in Faith. And remember, until then, your faith will overcome the world.